there, Catherine. Good day, you two. It's nice to see you here at this festive time. So, got any jobs for us? Hmm. I'm afraid I'd struggle to find you any commissions in the near future. With the arrival of the Windbloom Festival, the only task most Mondstadters are busy with is preparing gifts for their loved ones, but it's customary to do this oneself without assistance. Think of this period as the off-season for the Mondstadt branch of the Adventurers Guild. Spring is here, love is in the air, and everyone wants to relax and enjoy themselves. Even the cats at the tavern next door have been getting lovey-dovey with one another recently. Ew. Gross. You know that feeling you get when you burst out the doors after a nice nap, hoping to make it to the store before the limited edition drinks sell out, only to get there just in time to see the last two glasses snatched away right from under your nose by a couple of pesky lovebirds? <sighs> That's what this feels like. <laughs> Perhaps you two could simply take this chance to... Traveler! Paimon! Thank goodness I found you. Um, there's something I need your help with. Whoa! Sucrose? What is wrong with you? That's no way to greet a friend we haven't seen in so long. Uh, no, not help like in the Windbloom sense. It's just... <sighs> How do I explain? Go ahead, Sucrose. We don't have anything else to do right now anyway. Phew. Okay. Here's the situation. I've been appointed as the Windbloom Festival Special Ambassador by the Knights of Favonius this year. My task is to do good deeds for people during this festival of gratitude and love. Nice one! So how did they decide who to appoint anyway? They spun an empty bottle donated by Angel Share inside a circle with all our names on it. Whoever's name the bottle stopped at got chosen. I think so too. But everyone said that it was to make it fair, so everyone had an equal chance to become the special ambassador. The thing is, I'm not great at dealing with people, so I was really daunted by it at first. But I'm still glad that I got this role. Luckily, I came up with a way to spur myself on, which has helped. Have a look. Is that a test tube? Yep, every time I do a good deed for someone, I get them to breathe into a test tube. That way, I can collect everyone's breaths of joy. Sounds... fascinating! Are you gonna use them in your research? Yes. I believe these breaths of joy will serve as valuable raw materials for our chemical transmutation. With any luck, I'll be able to produce something truly miraculous. Mmm. Darn, now Paimon's hungry. Wait! You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? <laughs> Actually, I meant something even more exciting than that. I can't say for sure until I have more test results to confirm my hypothesis, though. Alchemists mustn't make claims they can't live up to. Anyway, I'm still missing one final breath of joy. Oh! Is that all you need help with? That's easy! Just treat Paimon to a sweet madame! Then you'll get your last breath of joy! Hey, come on! Paimon's doing her best to help, okay? <sighs> so, does it need to be more like... official or ceremonious or something? No, joy isn't measured in those terms at all. Let me put it this way. Have you ever planted a fruit seed and cared for it while it grows? In the same way that those tender, sweet fruits are the product of your time and effort, the amount of joy derived from an experience 
is positively correlated to the degree of hardship overcome during it. For example, in my case, I would say that to experience a statistically significant amount of joy, I'd have to do something like spend six months developing a medicine formula to a point where it was finally consistently effective. Similarly, in order to collect a significant amount of joy from other people, I have to find ways to do something sufficiently challenging on their behalf. Oh, Paimon gets it now! Long story short, you want us to help you find people for you to help! Oh, that's pretty tough given that it's the Windbloom Festival and all. Oh... I figured since you're such experienced travelers, you might have some ideas. But if even you don't know how to approach this... Yes, you're right. Well, if she's in, then Paimon will help too! With the talking, anyway. But, um, if things don't work out, can Paimon still get that sweet madame? Oh, come on, Traveler. This is a festival of gratitude and love, after all. How could you refuse? Excuse me, Sucrose. Could I borrow you for a second? Package for you. Oh, sure. Be right back. Wait. Is that who Paimon thinks it is? That's Kale, right? When did she arrive at Mondstadt? What are the chances? You were staring into space just now. Something the matter? Um... <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm fine. I was just looking at a Mondstadt children's book in the souvenir shop over there. While I was flipping through it, a piece of paper fell out. The writing on it was really mysterious. Almost like a prophecy. If you can do these things, you may light the lantern of utmost joy and receive a supreme blessing. And what does these things refer to? Find a flower that is not of this world. Find a guide who will never get lost. Find one who would never lie. Find a... Legend that never ends. So, four things in total. Here, have a look. I asked a lady who owns the store about it, but she said that she didn't know anything about any paper slips. Hi there. Sorry to butt in, but... What's the name of that storybook you just mentioned? Oh, <laughs> it was called The Boar Princess. Hmm, that is strange. I've read that book, and it sounds like that note you found has no relation to the story at all. Um... Do you know her? Do the honors. Kale, this is Sucrose, an alchemist with the Knights of Avonius. And Sucrose, meet Kale. She's a trainee forest ranger from Sumeru's Avidia Forest. Hello. Uh, hi. Ah. Uh, mm -mm. Getting awkward fast. They're both so shy. So, Sucrose, what are your thoughts on this prophecy? Could it be real? I, um, without having done any research, I couldn't comment definitively. Mm. Um, 
But if you want my subjective opinion, I don't think that it's a nasty prank or anything. The only people who read children's books are those with a childlike wonder and imagination. Or children, of course. I'm sure that whoever put this prophecy there would understand that. Would they really do this just to spread lies and ruin someone's innocence? I can't imagine anyone being so cruel. That's a great take! I love it! Exactly! Who would want to hurt a child's feelings? Okay, so... What do you think the blessing is, Sucros? Hmm... Um... If I had to guess... Maybe a fairy that can make people's wishes come true or something? I haven't read many fairy tales, so this is pure speculation. With no other information on hand or prior research to compare against, I'm afraid it might not even be worth considering. Wow! Her guesswork is really good, though. I want to pick her brain some more. But... Will she find it annoying if I keep asking her questions? We've only just met after all. Uh, what's the best thing to say to someone you're meeting for the first time? Uh. Well, <laughs> yes. I, I mean, if possible. Then, what would you wish for, Kali? Um... I'd wish for a... a better personality. Uh-huh. Huh? You can't waste it on that! You've got a great personality already! That's very kind of you. But... if you know me like I do... It's... Kale! Whew. You made good time, huh? You're way earlier than I expected. I spotted your green hair way off in the distance. Good thing my eyes are sharp, or I'd have missed you. Amber! Have you been doing well? Did you... finish all the pita pockets I brought you last time? You bet! They're getting yummier each time you make them. Huh? Wait, remind Paimon, have you been to Monstat before? Mm-hmm. A long time ago, I had a lot of help from a lot of people here in Monstat. So ever since my Alizar got better, I've been looking out for an opportunity to come back to Monstat and tell them all the news that I've been cured. <laughs> Thanks. If it's okay with everyone, why don't I take Kale for a walk around town? I'd like to show her some of the places she didn't get to see last time. Of course. Fine by me. Sure, go right ahead! I, uh... Um... Sorry, Amber. I agreed to meet my traveling companions by the city gate in a few minutes, so... I can't go with you just yet. Oh, that's alright. In that case, you guys go rest up, and I'll go see Master Jean to ask for some time off. Oh, okay. Traveler Sucrose, could you look after Kale for now? I'll come get her later and take her out. There's still a whole bunch of people I need to introduce her to. Sure, no problem. Awesome. See you later then. <sighs> um. You all right there, Kali? You look kind of disappointed. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm just feeling a little shy today. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Amber wants to introduce me to more of her friends. Am I gonna be able to cope? 
I've only met Sucro so far, and I'm already struggling to make conversation. I wish I had a little more self-confidence, but I'd find it much easier to make friends with people. Uh, it's nearly time! Let's go to the gate and see if they've arrived. Why is this humble windmill such a great view? I mean, it's understandable. It must have been a long time since you last came to Mondstadt. Because it is the true Great Vayu Viastra? <sighs> oh, come on. Don't tell me you don't get it. View, Vayu. And also Mahamatra, Vayu Viastra. No? Kainari! Sino! Over here! Whew, am I glad to see you. And who's this young lady? Master, this is Sucrose, an alchemist with the Knights of Favonius. We just met. See, Chris? This is my teacher, Tainari. He's a highly respected forest watcher in Sumeru, and he's also a very famous botanist. Kale's exaggerating. I'm Tainari. Pleased to meet you. <sighs> so you have a teacher as well. The pleasure is all mine, Tainari, sir. Yep, he's extremely knowledgeable, too. And this is General Mahamatra Sino of the Sumeru Academia. He's really famous in Sumeru as well! Greetings. Though if I might say so, we're purely here for personal reasons. You needn't be unduly concerned with our official positions. And Kale, there's no need to use my full title. Sino is fine. Or sir, if you absolutely must. Indeed. We're not here in an official capacity. Just to keep Kale company on her vacation. Keep me company? But it was you two that insisted on coming! Kale is very important to us. We felt obliged to ensure her safety on the long, treacherous journey to Mondstadt. But I've been here on my own loads of times before! What about your work, though? What if something bad happens while the General Mahamatra's away? There should be no issues. I have left my duties in the hands of my subordinates, and two especially reliable helpers. Oh, Sucrose! What were you saying about you having a teacher as well? I was just going to mention that... I think we're in a somewhat similar situation. I'm an assistant to Mr. Albedo, Mondstadt's genius alchemist. Oh, please, Sucrose. Genius is an unnecessary epithet. It will serve only to leave an exaggerated impression of me in the minds of our guests. M Mr. Albedo, but it is an objective truth. Hey, Albedo's here too! Great! The more the merrier! Hmm. So tell me, Sucrose, since your specialty is bioalchemy, what do you know about the anti-toxic properties of the calla lily? Wait, wait! Can we hold off on the nerdy topic for now? Pilot doesn't want to be left out. Oh, as it happens, I've studied the calla lily in quite some detail before, with it being a species native to Mondstadt. I wrote a whole report on my findings. If you're interested, Mr. Tainari, sir, I can go get it for you. <sighs> We're supposed to be here on vacation, and you're already thinking about how to improve your herbal medicines? Also, I thought we'd agreed to take on new identities for this trip. What new identities? Mine was Adventurer Sino, skilled desert explorer. Tainari's was technological consultant to the treasure hoarders, and Kale's was traveling musician. 
Very much so. I do wish some of the less cautious adventurers in the Avidya Forest would consider coming to Mondstadt instead. What Philanimo mushrooms lack in texture, they make up for in not causing vomiting or diarrhea. <laughs> Are you contemplating using some compounds from the calla lily as active ingredients in a targeted antidote? Yes, I gathered a few on the way here, and my initial research suggests to me that it could be worth a try. Okay, I got it. But, as much as I don't wish to be a wet blanket, it takes a huge amount of experimental data to conclusively prove how different drugs interact. Estimating the total development time would be very difficult. Add in the time for procurement and delivery of essential materials, and I'm not sure if we could complete development before you need to return. Then please, allow me to help. Mr. Albedo! Apologies for my tardy entrance in the present discussion. I understand you're looking to make an antidote for poisonous fungi, correct? If you happen to have some samples with you, or relevant documentation on hand, perhaps you might give me the chance to review them later. But before that, I invite the three of you to look at this. Arrangements. Were you quietly writing this up the whole time? Pylon didn't even notice! Hardly. Rather, I should apologize for interrupting a serious discussion between trained professionals, especially after they've traveled so far to be here, when I myself am neither an adventurer, nor a technological consultant, nor a musician. Nevertheless, I would encourage you to have a knowledgeable local arrange your detailed itinerary while you're in Mondstadt. Take a look, and should you find anything here to be objectionable, it can easily be adjusted. This is too kind of you. These arrangements are quite excellent. It looks great! Even Paimon feels like tagging along for the food and board! Very comprehensive. The adventurer, technological consultant, and musician I'll approve. Thank you. Just one thing. We'd like the chance to cook as well. Why don't we change the group dinner to a camping and cooking trip? Oh, I'll pitch the tents! I can help too. Um, and Paima will take her to Good Hunter to order some starters. Mondstadt's cold cut platter is not to be missed. Great, then it's decided. Sucrose and I will bring the three of you to your inn for a quick rest. You two, let's meet by the lake this evening. Hey, Sarah! Can we have a cold cut platter to go? Sure, coming right up. Would you like anything else? Um, do we, uh, want anything else? Give you the sweet flower from that sweet madame as a wind bloom. <laughs> no need to worry about that. Paimon can make room for good food. <laughs> All right, just a moment. Oh, mm, that was great. If that was a wind bloom treat, then Paimon wishes it could be the wind bloom festival every day. All right, looks like we're all here. Not at all. 
We just came early to set everything up, since we happen to be free today. Kali put up the tent so quickly, but still managed to tie very sturdy knots. You can really tell that she's a professional. I didn't do much apart from passing materials around. <laughs> thanks. It's all thanks to Master and Sino. They taught me everything I know. What can I say? For a skilled adventurer, this is just another day on the job. <sighs> Are you quite finished? Or were you going to sing each other's praises till the moon rises? Come on, let's all sit down. That sunshine sprat was really very good. I didn't watch you cook it, but I believe that the prominent umami flavor of the dish owes itself to more than the fish alone. That's correct. Any further deductions? Let me think. The aroma was quite uniform. Unlike that of a spice blend, it was also unfamiliar to me. So I would venture that it was a Mondstadt specialty. As far as edible Mondstadt plant species are concerned, calla lilies are usually used in soups. So if I had to guess... Small lampgrass? That's right. I've long heard that Sumeru's fish with cream sauce is noted for its gentle texture, which brings out the tenderness of the fish. Here in Mondstadt, we're not quite as varied in the use of spices as in Sumeru, but the principle of bringing certain distinct flavors to the forefront through combinations of natural ingredients is well, very much the same. I liked it a lot. I'm curious as to the exact ratio of ingredients. I'll write a copy of the recipe for you. Would anyone like to try the nutrient-dense meal I made? I'll have some. What about you, Kale? It doesn't look like you've eaten very much. Is your appetite low at the moment? Uh, no. I just don't eat a lot normally. Hmm... Um... Sorry. I didn't mean to make things awkward. Tainari. While we were on the road, we spotted something white. Walking on two legs. Was that Paimon? Which day was this? Just after passing through Stonegate. Hmm. Uh, Sino, are you sure your eyes were working that day? Or maybe your head was blocking your vision? Paimon always flies. There's no way she'd ever walk. Hmm. Is that right? I thought that you'd made me snacked on too many local... ground nuts. <sighs> no? Not funny? Ground, you know. As in ground up, but also the ground. Ground nuts make you fall to the ground. Uh, think of this as part of a process of getting to know Sino. Uh, on the bright side, these jokes show that he thinks of you as his friends. Still, we could test the hypothesis. What hypothesis? That plant species indigenous to Mondstadt may have an effect on the motor functions of flying lifeforms. By your logic, wouldn't that mean that eating, say, Zytune peaches? That would make a sick pime on peachy in no time or something. Hey! Not you two! <laughs> I think the Traveler and Paimon's conversations are more entertaining than Sino's jokes. Ah, I see. You must have been keeping quiet about this grievance for 
quite some time now. You seem much cheerier now that you're here in Mondstadt, Sino. Actually, it feels like you're a completely different person. That's because I'm Sino the Adventurer. Hmm? It's not? In fairness, you only saw him in his work mode while you were in Sumeru. He's actually like this most of the time when he's in a good mood. Yep, it's true. Sometimes when he's eating, he'll grumble about how the bowl is too shallow for the amount of food it contains and other random stuff like that. I understand. Then allow me to reintroduce myself. Before, you knew me as General Mahamatra Sino. Now, please see me as Sino the Adventurer. Uh, yeah, so that's another thing he does. He'll keep repeating something he thinks is funny until you stop trying to resist. Hmm. So you have two different mental states? Almost like different phases of matter. Interesting. I want to learn to do that too. I think in your case, the two states we would end up with would be highly conscientious sucrose and <laughs> stupefied sucrose. Oh, by the way, was there any reason in particular that you chose Mondstadt as your destination on this occasion? Oh, well, Lisa once told me that the Windbloom Festival is one of Mondstadt's biggest events of the year. I wanted to take this opportunity to give everyone a Windbloom as a token of my heartfelt gratitude for everything they've done to look after me. Plus, it was a good chance for Kale to get out and meet some new people. Kale, Lily. What? Kale's wind bloom. Maybe she should call it a Kale Lily. It sounds very Mondstadt. There's also Kale Flower, which would technically make more sense. But somehow, it doesn't sound as nice. Moving swiftly on... Wow! He just completely ignored the joke and carried on the conversation. Uh, guess sometimes that's the only way forward. Sumeru's been through some major changes recently, and things at work have only just started to calm down. I don't get many opportunities to take a vacation, and this was a chance to join Kale on her trip while also learning a few things about Mondstadt's flora and fauna that I'll be able to pass on to my peers and students on my return. Two birds with one stone. I came to ensure Kali's safety. That's just an excuse. Plain and simple. <sighs> also, there's the matter of a Genius Invocation TCG custom-made card back. Aha! So you did have an ulterior motive! Have you all played Genius Invocation TCG before? And that is why I am proud to call you my friend. When I first began contemplating getting a new card back, I asked around before eventually deciding to ask the legendary Mr. Kaltz for guidance. A friend of mine, Sawada, whom I played cards with on occasion, had been to Inazuma for the Irodori Festival. He told me that Kaltz was a Mondstadter, so I should try my luck there. Kaltz? Uh, isn't that... You mean, he's a friend of yours? I see. So, you came to Mondstadt in search of Calx. No, that is inaccurate. I came here principally to protect Kale. You most certainly did not. Kale's been here on the quiet numerous times, and this is the first time you felt the need to join. Not only me, Sim applies to you too, doesn't it? <laughs> if my writer friend were here now, I'm sure he would describe this curious coincidence as having the makings of a good story. It's always a pleasure to meet a fan. Oh, 
here he comes! Wait, you mean you're Mr. Calx? Having my new friends address me by my pen name feels... Uh, somewhat unusual. Please, just call me Albedo. Huh. So you're Calx. Sino's been talking about you non-stop recently. He's intent on getting you to design a bespoke card back for him. Uh, you didn't have to say all that. I don't usually take private commissions, but I believe that we are friends now, all of us. Our conversations have been deep and interesting, and Sino, your passion for this game is indeed one of a kind. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> Obviously. And given that you've come all this way from Sumeru to see me, I'd be quite honored to take this commission. Wow, your teacher's so nice. I feel the same about yours. Um, well, they definitely have different personalities, but they're similar when it comes to their character. So? How much should I budget for the timeless masterpiece you will produce for me? Surely, timeless masterpiece is something of an overstatement. Any artwork fit to appear on the reverse of my card decks is by definition a timeless masterpiece, even if I do say so myself. Don't mind him. These TCG nutjobs are all like this. I see. So... This has an almost religious significance. Well, for starters, I'd like to hear a few more of your jokes. Uh, my jokes? You like them? I do. Really? I didn't see you laughing. Well, the joke's ability to induce laughter is a separate matter, but I certainly find them fun. If I might interrupt, uh, does anyone else smell something strange? Uh, my nutritional meal! Will it be okay? Should we go over and take a look too? Huh. So, a good joke is not necessarily required to make people laugh at them. I'd be grateful if you could check on Sucrose. As for our new friends here, leave them to me. Well, Albedo and Sucrose were delightful, but this was still an exhausting meal. The cooking pot. Is everything okay? the base is burned. We can still use the cooking pot. It just needs a bit of a wash. Good thing Tainari's nose is so sharp. Has he been in this kind of situation a lot before? <sighs> I know, it's just... I'm sorry to disappoint Sino. I guess we'll have to do this again another day. Oh, uh, yes. I'm not sure if you've noticed. Kali seems a little... depressed. I noticed she was in a low mood when everyone was talking. Remember that note she received? I was just thinking. I want to try solving this riddle and giving Kali the chance to accept the blessing. Oh, yeah! She's someone who needs your help! Exactly. Maybe she'll be willing to breathe into my test tube. But anyway, that can wait. As much as I'd like to make progress in my research, I'd prefer to see her smile. All right, we'll help out too! You will? Then tell me, honestly, do you think that this prophecy is for real too? Uh-huh... Right! All right, 
Let's meet at the Alchemy Crafting Bench in the city. I've got some thinking to do in the meantime. We're back! Oh, what a shame. You just missed a joke about windmills. Stop. Please. I don't need to hear it a fifth time. That bad, huh? Hmm. Well, now Paimon really wants to hear it for some reason. Didn't you say you want to see the Dragon of the East at some point? When are you going? Tomorrow morning. And you? What are your plans? I'll go into the mountains to have a stroll and collect a few plants as samples. Oh, uh, perhaps I could join you? I'll be looking for inspiration for these card back illustrations. Found you! I knew I was onto something as soon as I saw the fire. Wow, you have really sharp eyes. That's an outrider for you. Uh-oh. Did we break the fire safety rules or something? Actually, you didn't. Strictly speaking, you should have reported your plans first. But since two of our very own alchemists are here, I'm happy to look the other way. <laughs> ah, yes, introductions. I'm Amber, and this is the Reconnaissance Company Captain Eula, a good friend of mine. Good evening. You are friends of Kale, yes? A pleasure to meet you. Oh, Amber and Eula. The pleasure is ours. I've heard a lot about both of you from Kale. Oh, really? All positive, I hope. You asked that last time, too! Of course it was positive! I'd say... We hear the latest news about you every time you write to Kale. <laughs> Glad to know we've made a good impression so far. Anyway, we're just here to collect Kale, so don't let us interrupt your chat. Come on, Kale. We're gonna take you to check out a few scenic spots. Okay, great! <laughs> Still as high energy as always. Hmm? You know Amber? Yes, we've met. She's Kali's most important friend. And for that, we are also very grateful to her. <sighs> That's Amber for you! Her outgoing personality means she can make friends with just about anybody! Hmm. It's getting late, and we still have a lot lined up tomorrow. I suggest we all head back and get some rest. All right, I'll start packing up. You're gonna get the tone-deaf bard to check out that note, aren't you? <laughs> Guess Paimon knows you pretty well, huh? Knowing him, he should be hitting the taverns around this time. We can go corner him and make him answer our questions. Let's move! Oh, it's been a while. I'm on call, Dick. Tone Deaf Bard, drinking as usual. Put your drink down and get your game face on. We've got some important questions for you, mister. Uh, okay. So, what do you make of it? <laughs> Aren't you forgetting something? It's the Windbloom Festival right now! You can't just go around asking people for help so blatantly. Ugh. Well, if you won't tell us the answer, could you at least tell us if this thing's worth a shot? Sounds to me like you want a hint or two. <laughs> a fine answer. The person who wrote this prophecy is very powerful. If you manage to solve the riddle, good things are sure to happen. Also, I happen to know where this lantern is. Once you've found the four things, I'll even write the location down for you. Isn't that generous of me? <laughs> Whatever. We weren't expecting much from you anyway. You can get back to guzzling wind and blowing wind now. Hmm. Oh, woe is me. 
Paimon sees me as nothing more than a drunken wastrel. There are actually a great many things that we bards are required to do. <laughs> it just happens that enjoying life is the most important one. Once this is over, would you like to join me for a drink? You know, a favor for a favor. A flower that is not of this world. Hmm, not of this world. Sucrose! We've got some good news and some bad news. Which would you like to hear first? Um, let's have the bad news first, I guess. Huh? Really? Don't most people usually want to hear the good stuff first? Oh, alright then. Basically, we went to Windrise to divine the breeze. The wind said that the prophecy is real and that your idea is a really good one. That doesn't sound like bad news. So what's the real bad news then? Uh, Paimon ate the bad news! <laughs> Uh... Blame Sino! If it's not funny, then it's his fault! <laughs> it's fine. Well, that puts my mind at rest. Now, back to the other issue I've been mulling over. I was thinking about the flower that is not of this world. It could mean a human-cultivated variety that doesn't occur in nature. But that's basically claiming that it doesn't come from this world in the first place. When actually, it's just a variant of an existing breed. So, the initial question is... Can the flower's origins be traced back to a natural organism? If so, it cannot be correctly described as... Not of this world. But then, supposing we identified something outside of that category... Whose job would it be to decide whether it belongs in this world or not? Then the question becomes... Do of this world... And from this world, mean the same thing? Or is it deeper than that? Whoa, whoa, slow down! Paimon's head is already starting to spin! Okay, um... I did have one other line of thought as well. What about a flower created using alchemy? Would that be not of this world? Albedo may know the answer, but asking him right away would be like asking the teacher for the answers to your exam paper. It would render our search for the truth meaningless. I'd rather try and figure this out for myself. Could it be the wind bloom? Oh, now that you mention it, that's definitely a possibility. The wind bloom doesn't refer to a specific flower. Everyone defines what it means for themselves. In which case, the wind bloom doesn't exist in reality. <sighs> this does seem like a promising direction. I've made a note. Okay, I better go read up on this. Yay! Paimo was actually useful this time! Guess we have that sweet madame to thank, huh? I'll need some time to prepare. Could we meet up here and... Say, two days' time? Sure thing! In the meantime, we'll also think about the other three riddles in the prophecy. But, uh... Since we're really going for this now, shouldn't we say something to Kale about it? I originally wanted to leave it as a surprise for her, and I also didn't want to get her hopes up over nothing. But you're right, Paimon. I'll need to be careful how I word it. But I'll try to find some time over the next couple days to mention it to her. All right. Thanks so much. Huh. So this is Storm Terror's lair. Hmm. From which direction will Storm Terror appear, I wonder? Um, excuse me. Who's there? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, I, I didn't mean to disturb you. I apologize as well. I acted on force of habit. You must be a local, yes? My name is Sino. 
and I'm here sightseeing in Mondstadt. In truth, it is I who am disturbing you. Um, might I ask if you're looking for something here? I'm waiting for Storm Terror to arrive. You even set up a camera? Yes. I hope to capture a good picture as reference material for an artist I know. Oh, in that case, let me help keep watch too. From what I've heard, Storm Terror's movements have some regular schedule. Hmm. Roughly how often does it appear? Uh, hold on. I'll have to check against our data first. Let me consult my notes. Hmm. Um, Mr. Sino, sir, are you going to stand there staring into the sky the entire time? Don't worry, I'm quite strong. My neck can take it. No, no, I, I mean, you should sit down. I, I brought a blanket. Here, you can borrow it. I'll be all right. Oh, um, okay, well, huh, weird. Now I'm staring up into the sky too. I've heard that Cecilia has only grown remote spots at high altitude, and that you're unlikely to ever see one unless you go looking for it. Though they can be preserved for a long time as specimens, I can't take back the beauty they possess in the wild. It's a shame. Shall I ask Sucrose to develop a Cecilia variant with improved soil adaptability for you? I should warn you, though, it may very well end up with a name like Tetratanic Ananimo Cecilia, or perhaps Epsilon Series Cecilia Variation 601 Sumeru Growth Type. Is this you attempting to tell a joke? Unfortunately not, I'm being completely serious. In that case, I look forward to... well, whichever of those two it ends up being. Back to our previous topic, if you wish to use antitoxic compounds from calla lilies in an antidote, then I have a few suggestions. Whoa! Did you two see that? A bird with huge wings just flew by! If Master Tainari was here, he'd be able to tell you its scientific names, species, and behaviors. But, as for me, all I can tell you is, it isn't a species we have in Sumeru. Oh? Then what kinds of birds do you have in Sumeru? Dust birds! They have the most beautiful, vibrant colors! The feathers on their chest are the color of ripe sunsidias, and their wingtips are the color of tender mint leaves. They're not too skittish around people, and at my tree hall- I mean, this tree that I often go past. There's a dusk bird there that always looks at me like it understands what I'm saying. I once picked up one of its feathers from the ground. It felt really nice. You have keen observation skills and a love for living things. You'd be better served directing your energies there, rather than sighing and whining all the time. <sighs> Eula says things in the most awkward way possible sometimes. Just ignore the second half, Kali. No, it's fine. I know what she means. She does have a point. Are you hungry for fish? I see quite a few over there. Sounds like someone's up for a fishing contest, huh? Fair warning, though. I won't lose. Seriously? Another competition? I thought we were supposed to be sightseeing. Uh, but still, wait for me. Oh, hey there, Traveler. Nice to see ya. <laughs> well, Sino's out of the country on a trip, so he got me to come and help his subordinates take care of a few things. 
I guess you can say I'm his temporary substitute. The atmosphere around here is not too bad nowadays, so I don't mind sticking around once in a while. You've probably got a lot going on yourself, I bet. Good luck with everything. Don't get hurt. Sitaria. You should take a break and have a bite to eat. Sitaria? Ah, uh, thank you. Sorry, I was completely absorbed in what I was doing. I didn't even hear your voice. Oh, it's all right. I'm glad that you enjoy the work you're doing. Sorry you've ended up having to babysit me. I'm sure you have far more important things to do. Well, Rahman's busy with the Eremites these days. But having me stand in as your bodyguard must be a welcome breath of fresh air for you. It's a change for me, too. My first time working as a bodyguard. I'm just treating it as a chance to get a taste of Dia's line of work. I tried telling Mahamatra Sino that I can work unsupervised. Really, this ought to be the last of his worries. He said that educators willing to work in the desert are an extremely rare breed, so I need a bodyguard for protection at all times. I think he's being a little overprotective. But, at the end of the day, that's why we know we can count on the General Mahamatra. He and I are of the same mind in this case, so I am very happy to protect you. While you're in Aru Village, we're partners. We don't want to cause you any unnecessary pressure. So please, try to enjoy your time here. Sucrose, we're here! Oh, Traveler, Paimon! I only just arrived myself, so I'm still getting ready. Ah, oh, and... Kale just passed by a moment ago. She said she had some things to sort out at the inn where she's staying, but she'll meet up with us when she's done. Apparently, Tainari and Sino both went out, but she stayed behind because she wanted to help us. Not too bad. After reviewing it again with fresh eyes, I came up with a new theory which seems to hold some water. I'll attempt to explain it as simply as I can. I believe that each of the four things in the prophecy refers to a different field of knowledge. So, in a way, the prophecy is a test of the reader's intelligence. But it's unlikely for any one person to have expertise in all these different areas. So I suggest that we seek out one expert from each and get their opinion. Also, in two out of the four areas, the prophecy seems to want us to find specific people. It may even turn out that the people themselves are the answers. Hmm. So it sounds like we should put our heads together and list out the people who can help us. Exactly. I think we can go through each riddle in turn and generate four groups of names to match the four questions. All right, then let's start from group one. The first riddle was a flower that is not of this world. Personally, I would still go with Albedo for this one. Alchemy is the most likely to have to do with otherworldly things, and he is by far the leading expert in this regard. Exactly! You're the creator of the Tetratanic Sweet Flower! Who knows? Maybe that's the flower we're looking for. Huh? You really think so? <laughs> oh, but what about Tainari? He's a forest watcher and knows all about plants. If it's a flower we're looking for, maybe he's the man for the job. All right, I'll add him to the list as well. On to group two. This subject is a guide who will never get lost. Hmm, that's kind of abstract. Hmm, does it just mean someone who never loses their way? Wait, but... They have to be able to guide others, too, so it's not quite as simple as that. Oh, you mean Mona? Yeah, she definitely counts! Mona... Yes, she certainly seems very confident, and she can use her astrology to guide people. Would Bennett count? Well, his luck's so bad that as long as he 
go in the opposite direction from him, he'll always be going the right way, right? Hmm. I see. I, I suppose I can't argue with that logic. Add him to the list! Finding everyone won't take long, so one extra person won't hurt. <sighs> I know. Would Outrider Amber be a valid candidate for this category as well? Yeah, she would! She's got a great sense of direction after all. As a matter of fact, when the Traveler and Paimon first came to Mondstadt, she was actually the one who gave us directions. Yes, she's certainly a good guide. Is there anyone else? <sighs> Let me think. Ah, yes, I believe there may be one more. Albedo once made a set of equipment for Mika from the reconnaissance company. He's their surveyor, and an exceptional pathfinder. He's even instructed others in the discipline of surveying before. So, in my view, he's highly unlikely to lose his way, and would be very good at helping others find theirs. Cool! Another one for our list! Wait... Kale should have been here by now. Wonder what's taking her so long. M sorry, could we continue our chat somewhere else? Oh, you wanna go see how she's doing, right? Sure, let's all go. Hi, Kale. Hope we're not intruding or anything. Is everything okay? Ah, sucrose! I, uh... I was preparing some stuff. Is it time already? Oh no, I... I'm sorry. Don't worry. The Traveler and I only just met up. We were just worried that you might get lost along the way, so we thought that we'd come get you. Thank you. I'm ready to join you now. Um... How's that thing going? So let's pick up where we left off. Next up is the third line. One who would never lie. Hmm. Anyone spring to mind? Uh, you really think so? Seems like it would be pretty difficult for someone in his position to avoid having to lie. Then what about Kaya? He's the cavalry captain and a rather popular figure, but... You think there's something fishy about him too, huh? Yeah. He's definitely a sneaky one. Bet he lies all the time! Hmm... I can't help but agree with you there. There's the tone-deaf bard! Ugh. But on second thought, he wouldn't qualify either. He talks way too much nonsense. Hmm... Is there anyone else for missing? Acting Grandmaster Jean? She has a good name in that regard. But from what I know, she sometimes covers up the truth out of concern for those around her. For example, when Lisa loses track of time in the library and misses her patrol shift, Jean will come up with some excuse, like Lisa's ill today. Also, she sometimes makes up stories to get Klee to behave, like the one about the big monster that comes to catch naughty kids who don't go to bed on time. Do you think that rules her out? Hmm... White lies are still lies, but... Do we really have to reject her because of some harmless fibs? It's not like she had evil intentions. No! We're the ones being strict! Rosaria doesn't strike me as the type of person to lie. Oh, Kale. You probably haven't met her yet, have you? She's a sister from the church who looks... Um... A little scary and not very sociable. She stopped by the alchemy bench once, a long time ago, and asked me about Albedo. I thought maybe she was trying to find him, for work or something. But when I asked, she just said that she was curious about him because he was so intelligent, and wanted to talk to his assistant to find out what he was like. A lot of people might have given a more tactful justification, but I could see in her face that she wasn't trying to hide anything. 
She was just very direct and straightforward. That's why I don't think of her as the lying type. Rosaria doesn't look like the sort of person you'd want to get into a fight with. Maybe she just fights her way out of situations that some people might lie to get out of. I can definitely see that. I've also heard the other sisters say that Rosaria doesn't even make excuses when she skips choir. She just doesn't show up. She's a tough cookie, huh? Let's put her name down. In that case, I think Sino fits in this list, too. Ah, true. Lying's probably more trouble than it's worth for someone like him. Kinda like with Rosaria. Oh, and Paimon also nominates Razor. Bet he couldn't lie to save his life. I've also got someone else in mind. Noelle, the trainee knight. She's a very honest person. I don't think she'd tell a lie. Alrighty, write her name down too! Wait, there's one more person. You know, our long-standing staffer at the alchemy bench. Huh? You mean Timaeus? Yes, him. Um, truth be told, he's been love-struck recently. He swore that he wouldn't say a dishonest word or slack off until he succeeds in getting the woman he loves. Timaeus has a crush? Yes, that's right. Well, who is it? Do you know her? I've never met her. All I know is that she's from Liyue. Timaeus says that she's fun, has a great personality, and is very, very good looking. Since we're on the topic, helping Timaeus win the lady of his dreams was also one of my goals for this Windbloom Festival. But how can we help with that? I don't know. Make sure he uses nice paper and a fancy envelope when he sends letters to her? Help him pick a nice gift and wrap it properly. That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah! I had the same situation once in the Avidia Forest! I helped another forest ranger out by delivering a love letter to the co-worker she likes. Yep, that sort of thing exactly. Oh, also, I helped him with some of the groundwork for one of his research projects. He must have appreciated it, because he gave me a refrigeration device that he's been developing as a thank you gift. Is it any good? Um, I mean, it looks nice. <laughs> Sounds like a no. Hmm. All right. Guess we'll put Loverboy down on the list then. Okay. So last of all, we have a legend that never ends. Anyone come to mind for this particular line? Lisa, perhaps. A librarian understands books best, and aren't most legends written down somewhere? When I think about legends. Fairy tales and picture books come to mind. Maybe Kale! She read a lot of fairy tales when Tainari was teaching her to read. Oh, do I count? Of course you do. I'll put you on the list. I prefer to read things like an illustrated analysis of alchemical substances and their uses, the fascinating principles of crafting, and hypotheses of life. Ah, uh, point taken. Paimon didn't quite understand any of those. Hmm. Klee might be a good choice. Her mother, Alice, is a renowned traveling author, so I'll bet she's been exposed to all sorts of myths and legends. Alright then, Klee makes the short list. Well, that should just about do it. Next up, we should go and ask the people on the list about the prophecy. Do we have to ask... Absolutely everyone on the list? It seems like a lot of people. It is. So, I was thinking that perhaps we should split up? That might make our search more effective. Okie dokie! Also, I thought of a method of gathering feedback. No problem! We can do that! You and the Traveler are practically joined at the hip, so you two can go together. I'll pair up with Kale. 
Capable Kali and Sensible Sucrose. Sounds like a winning combination. Okay. I promise I'll help. Capable Kali. Yeah, I got this. Rest assured that the unbeatable Traveler and Paima will do our part too. Off we go. I plan on starting from the person with the most defined stronghold. So let's go to the library. Lisa should be there. Stronghold. That's an... Uh, interesting word to use. Um, maybe... Den? No, that's even worse. How about... Lair? Here we are. Lisa's Lair. Oh no. That was a bad word choice. Now Sucrose is using it. It's all my fault. Lisa, might I ask if... Huh? Sucrose? Kale, what are you doing here? I can only sucrose that they were Kale-ing on someone. At least uh, that's as far as I know. Oh, please, just stop it with these puns. I beg you! Are you trying to win worldwide fame for unfunny jokes? Um, is Lisa not here at the moment? Surprising, isn't it? She went out. I'm afraid it's just us here looking for information. Except me. I'm not here for information. Like you, I came here for an abortive search for the librarian, who is also my academia senior. Oh, so you studied in the same darshan as Lisa? That's right. Her mentor in Sumeru was also my benefactor. We were both Spontamod students. Wow, that's cool. But wait, we're getting sidetracked. We came here to look for some information. Kale and I are investigating a prophecy. And we were hoping you all might be able to help. Oh? What sort of prophecy? Hmm, I see. You want to ask them about the flower that is not of this world, and me about the one who would never lie. But there's no rush! You don't need to answer right away. We're just here to tell you about the situation. You can take your time to think it over and submit any thoughts you have in written form to the Sucrose Mailbox. The Sucrose Mailbox? <sighs> yep. I was thinking about it on the way. And although they seem like trick questions, there's a lot to mull over once you get down to the details. A quick answer off the top of your head might not go into enough depth. So, I decided to place a mailbox next to the alchemy crafting table. Everyone can submit their written answers there when they're ready. We don't have to call it the Sucrose Mailbox, though. It could just as well be called the Sucrose and Kale Mailbox. Or even the Sucrose, Kale, Traveler, and Paimon Mailbox. <laughs> I think in this case, we can just go with your quick answer off the top of your head. Sounds like a good solution. Certainly more reliable than verbal discussion alone. Agreed. Certainly when it comes to discerning whether someone is a liar or not, you cannot simply take them at their word. Understood. Once we've had a look into it, we'll place our replies into your mailbox. Thank you all so much. Okay, let's take them off the list and carry on working our way down. Mm-hmm. Already done. I'm pleasantly surprised to see those two introverts getting along so well. Do you get the feeling that Kale's return to Mondstadt has emboldened her more contrarian side? Yes, I'd noticed that too. Traveling and meeting old friends are both good for the body and soul. And isn't rediscovering one's youth while revisiting old haunts a worthwhile pursuit? When I first met Kale, She'd never known happiness or youth. 
but things are different now. Her Elazar being cured was a huge milestone in her life. Kale is a very sensitive and introverted child. I'm sure you must have noticed that too, Albedo. From the time she's been in my care, I've observed that she's actually a very lively character by nature. But she had a very rough start in life, and it changed her. So, might I assume that your respective claims of looking for plants and artists in Mondstadt were just... pretexts? I wouldn't say that. Both Kale and Genius Invocation TCG are very important to me. Would it really kill you to just say yes in this situation? Fine. Yes. We came out of concern for Kale. She's been back to Mondstadt of her own accord several times, but it has led to no significant improvement in her mood. Well, it won't hurt to give her some more time. I believe that Sucrose might be able to help her. Sounds like an extension of your own self-confidence as her teacher. You could say that. In a similar vein, I've heard that Sumeru scholars often build their social relationships based on their academic ones. Is that true? I suppose it might look like that from your perspective. Sumeru society is something of a special case. The reason it is known as the City of Learning is because all of its resources are in some way linked to academia. As such, academic resources equate to social capital. It is not unheard of, for example, for people to build a family in order to pursue further studies. But the relationship between the three of us is not an academic one turned social. We've never even worked on a paper together for starters. Oh, so the academic paper is the nexus of the academic family. Hmm, interesting. I would think of us more as siblings, an equal and pure relationship unaffected by academic considerations. As much as I'd prefer not to admit it, that statement is not inaccurate. I can understand that position. I have a younger sister myself, and it's only natural for me to be protective of her. What you describe fits the idea of a city of learning, as I imagine it. The family is where all social relationships intersect, as such, a family founded on common goals may actually be more stable. By the way, who's the eldest between you? Uh, let's not go down this rabbit hole, please. In terms of age, I'm the eldest, of course. He just doesn't want to admit it. But your mental age is younger than that. I dare say even by enough to be the youngest sibling. Perhaps I could bring Kale into this happy family to be your elder sister. No. You will never see me admit to being the youngest sibling. Except perhaps as a last-ditch effort to turn the tables in a game of cards. Them. Now then, where should we go first? Let's try our luck at the bulletin board, shall we? A lot of people tend to show up there at some point in the day. Maybe we'll get lucky. Nice! Just as we hoped! There's a load of people here! Huh? Even Lisa's here! Hey there, Traveler and Paimon. It's been a while. How have you been? We've been doing pretty well. You look surprised, cuties. Is it because of me? Teacher is not at the usual place. <laughs> oh, please. It's not as if I'm glued to my chair. I like to get out for a little fresh air every once in a while. Mika's here today, so I thought it'd be a good time to introduce him to Bennett and Razor. They're all out and about quite often, so it's helpful for them to get to know one another. Uh, hello, everyone. M my name is Mika. I... I look forward to working with you. No need to be so formal. We've known them for ages. They're cool. 
Windbloom. Fun? Actually, we haven't gotten to the fun part yet. We've been busy investigating a prophecy. A prophecy? What kind? A good one or a bad one? Gosh, that all sounds quite fascinating. I can't believe I made it onto your list of names. You really think I'll be able to help? Believe in yourself. Right, believe in yourself. You're a first-rate adventurer, Bennett. Okay, then in that case, I'll step up and present my thoughts on the matter. Uh, except I forgot I'm not really good at organizing my thoughts. Oops. Oh, there's no need to tell us all of your thoughts right here and now. Sucro said she'll put a mailbox next to the crafting bench, so you can just write down your thoughts when they come to you, and drop them there. A meticulous and efficient plan. Yep, that sounds like Sucrose. I will think also. Give me some time. You still have other people on your list that you need to go see, right? We should leave you to it. Don't worry about us. We'll drop off our letters at the mailbox as soon as we're done. Okay, bye for now. Let's head over to Star Snatch Cliff next. Maybe we'll be able to find some people there. And even if we don't find any familiar faces, you can see really far from up at the top. Maybe we can find people that way. Oh, you're working so hard. Do be sure to get some rest when you can. If you get tired, you know you're always welcome to visit me for a break and a cup of tea. to next. Let me check my notes. Huh, this way. Got it. Kale, please follow me. Oh, it's our lucky day. There are several people over there. Amber? Wow, and Eula's with her too. And Klee also spies... the girl with the long scarf! Kale, we were just talking about you. Oh, right, I don't think you've been introduced to Noelle before. Kale, this is Noelle, maid of the Knights of Favonius. Nice to meet you, Kale. I missed you the last few times you were in Mondstadt, so I'm glad to finally meet you in person. Nice to meet you too, Noel. My name is Kale. But you already knew that. Relax, you two. There's no need to be so courteous. We're not on some kind of diplomatic mission here. Klee, what are you doing here? Are you planning to blast some fish? Nope. Klee's on patrol with the other knights. Huh. Now that you mention it... It looks like everyone here is a Knight of Favonius, except for Kale and me. I'd heard that there was a very young knight in the ranks, but it's still a surprise to see with my own eyes. Kale, what do you do? I'm a trainee forest ranger in the Avidia Forest. Train me? It means I'm not officially a fully qualified forest watcher yet. I'm still learning. Oh, you're just like me. I'm still working towards becoming a fully qualified knight. Technically, though the distinction is hardly relevant right now. This isn't a very formal patrol. We're just chatting. <sighs> Don't panic, Kale. Just pick a topic and join the conversation. Don't panic. Whatever you do, don't panic. It's just Amber and her friends. There's no need to be nervous. Let me guess. Were you chatting about the new guests in town? Yup. A few folks from Sumeru have come to visit, so we're brainstorming a few nice surprises for them. Amber! Ah! Uh, sorry, I, uh... <laughs> At least I didn't say anything about what the surprises are. Oh no. How am I supposed to join this conversation now? What do I say to that? 
Speaking of nice surprises, we've actually had a fairly big one recently. What kind of surprise? Tell me, tell me! Uh, I'm saved. Sigros is giving me a lead-in. Now, I just need to follow on from what she's already started talking about. Hmm. What an interesting prophecy. I have no idea what the answers could be, though. So, essentially, you're gathering information to help you solve the riddles, correct? I'll do my best to help. Thank you so much, Eula. Anytime. There's no need to answer right away. We'll put a mailbox next to the crafting bench for people to drop us a note once they've thought of something. I'll drop something in there for sure! Nice idea. I think we can all commit to writing a note. We'll see what we can come up with. Yep, don't worry. You can count on us. But we do have to finish our patrol first. What route are you taking today? We started in the Stormbearer Mountains and we'll end at the city gates. You'd be very welcome to join us, but it sounds like you're pretty busy with all this. Um... No. There's always next time. We'll join up with you after we're done working through this prophecy. Oh, yeah, so, um... We'll be on our way for now. <laughs> See you later. Have a safe trip back. Are you okay, Kali? Uh, was it that obvious? No, no, not at all. It just looked like you had something on your mind. Uh, so that means it was obvious. Uh, whatever is bothering you, you can talk to me about it if you want. I'm happy to help. Thanks, Sucrose. Well, uh, the truth is, I don't really know how to act around Amber and the others. Really? I thought you two were good friends. We are. Amber's a really important friend to me. I don't know. I guess if I'm being completely honest, the problem's probably with me. The first time I came to Mondstadt, I was really immature. I didn't want to let people in, and I was generally pretty awful to everyone. Amber was the one person who didn't give up on me, and if it wasn't for her persistence, I wouldn't have found a friend at all. Without Amber, I might not even be here today. And because of that, I really look up to her. I think of her as my role model, and hoped that maybe one day, I could learn to be like her. But after trying and failing for several years, I think I finally realized. I'm no Amber, and I never will be. Looking back, it seems silly that I ever thought like that. Or nothing alike at all. My personality's so... <sighs> weird. I always get so anxious and I overthink everything. Aw, Kali. Don't say that. <sighs> Um, Sucrose, would it be okay if I told you a bit about my past? <sighs> oh. I already knew bits and pieces about her. But still, why did she have to go through all that? Uh, I'm sorry. We've only just met and I'm already dumping all of this on you. This is why I get so frustrated at myself. I'm always doing this. I get into a spiral of self-doubt and then I end up having to find somewhere to vent it all out. No, 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 it's fine. I'm really glad that you're willing to tell me all this. 
People don't open up about their deepest feelings unless they really trust the other person. Don't you think? At least, I think it's kind of an honor. And, I mean... Um... You've probably noticed by now, but I don't have the best social skills either. I always just end up talking about the things I'm interested in, and going on and on. But even so, you still listen to me when I talk my head off about alchemy. <laughs> it's a relief to listen to you talking about yourself for once. If you hadn't told me all of those things, I never would have guessed that you struggle so much. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like we're very similar people. R really Yeah. Everyone has their own problems to deal with. I certainly do. All the feelings that you talked about just now, I totally get it. It takes so much more effort for us introverts to fit into a crowd. When you were saying about how you try to think about what to say in advance, and you're constantly terrified of saying the wrong thing and making things awkward, I relate to that so much. Oh, and also that part about studying under a genius. In fact, before meeting you, I'd never met anyone who seemed so similar to myself. Oh. Um. I'm not very good at giving words of comfort or anything, and I'm not gonna tell you to just get over it or stop worrying about it. How about we just sit here for a little while? We don't have to force a conversation if we can't think of anything. We can just... sit here together. Sucrose has stopped talking, but for some reason, this doesn't feel awkward at all. Maybe she's right, and we're more similar than I realized. In Sumeru, I always like to find a quiet place to just sit and watch the scenery, but it's always by myself. I never thought there'd be a day when I could do this with someone else by my side. Mondstadt's breeze is so gentle and soft. Hey, Kali. See that cloud over there? Doesn't it look like... one of my test tubes? Um... Uh... I don't think so. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> then, maybe we're not quite on the same wavelength on everything. At least, not when it comes to looking at clouds in the sky. <laughs> Thank you, Sucrose. I feel much better after talking to you. Yeah, it helps a lot, doesn't it? I also vent to my flasks, sometimes. The next time I get the chance... I have to show you my tetratanic sweet flower and my tetratanic wind bloom. Your tetra what? Two of my favorite things I've made. They're really cool. I think you might like them. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, you'll definitely have to show them to me sometime. I brought some crackers with me. You want one? There's cheese flavor or tomato flavor. Sure. Hmm, I'll try the cheese one. Aw, look! They're enjoying the scenery together. Hmm, shall we go play with them? No, it's fine. Let them sit for a while. We're not what Kale needs right now. She needs a new friend. Someone different, who's never met her before. I don't get it. Is there a difference? There is. You'll understand once you're a little older, Klee. People can draw different kinds of strength from different kinds of friends. And right now, Kali needs someone that's just not the same old me. Paimon hopes we find someone we need here. Help! Oh, I beg you, please don't let go! <sighs> Who's that yelling? Let's 
hurry and take a look. Timaeus? And we also have Rosaria and Mona? What kind of mishmash ensemble is this? Good question. What kind of a motley crew is this? It's been a while, Traveler. You two are looking pretty good. I trust you've been well. Yep, we're definitely faring a lot better than this poor guy on the ground. Hey, please don't rub salt in my wound. I really have been trying my best. Oh, you're one to talk. If this sister hadn't grabbed you in time, then you'd have been seriously hurt, if not dead. I know, I know. I really am grateful, miss. I can't thank you enough. Don't mention it. Just lending a hand. Quite literally. And had she not lent him a hand and pulled him up, he would have gone tumbling down the cliffside. What happened? Did Timaeus almost fall off the cliff? Uh, well, so what actually happened was... I came to Star Snatch Cliff today to pick some flowers and ran into Mona on the way. She took a look at her scry glass and advised me to turn back because it would be dangerous. But you still came up here anyway? Well, yes, I did, because there's something I just had to do. Oh, I hardly think giving flowers to your crush is worth throwing one's life away for. It's rare to run into someone with a death wish in this area. I don't have a death wish. I just uh, didn't think it would really come true. I mean, when Mona said it would be dangerous, I, I thought I'd be fine as long as I watched my step cautiously. I'm, I'm sorry, okay? I, I was wrong. I'm telling you, I'm just here chasing the love of my life. Love struck Monstatters is what the Windbloom Festival is all about. Okay, that explains you, but why is Rosaria here? I was looking for a quiet place to escape the crowds. I wasn't planning on having to save a life along the way. So that's why the scryglass just showed danger instead of fatal danger. <laughs> Very funny. Anyway, uh, Traveler and Paimon, uh, what brings the two of you to Star Snatch Cliff? Just trying our luck. We've got a lot of people we need to see today, so we've been all over the place. Actually, you're some of the people we were looking for. Huh? Huh, I see. So, all we'll need to do is find some clues, make a note, and drop it off at the mailbox? I, I can't believe there's a prophecy like this, it let alone that I have a part to play in it. Oh, I guess this means everyone will find out about my crush now. <laughs> I, I came here because I wanted to give some Cecilia's to the girl I love. They'll really suit her. Uh, she's... No, 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 no one asked. Please, do not subject us to your gushing about your girlfriend. Uh, oh, well, you saw right through me. You said you need clues, right? In that case, Mona Magistus the Astrologist will provide you with a personally handwritten letter. Just wait for it to show up in your mailbox. You can be on your way now. We won't keep you any longer. Alright, then let's head back for now and meet up with everyone else. Will do. Oh, this is all so embarrassing. Thank you both. Beat us. Welcome back. Did everything go well? Yep, we managed to find and talk to everybody. We got back a little early, so we took some time just now to put the mailbox together. We got really lucky today. The vendors were feeling super generous, so we didn't even need to pay for the materials. It's just a shame that Kale got a splinter. Uh, don't worry about me. I'm used to working in the rainforest. I get splinters all the time. I've already taken care of it. 
We've already wrapped up everything on our to-do list for today. So, all we need to do now is wait for everyone's letters to arrive. Traveler, Paimon, why don't you get some rest while I keep an eye on the mailbox? You're definitely your master's student, Sucrose. As long as you are Albedo are around, Paimon can relax and know that everything's taken care of. <sighs> Stop. You're embarrassing me. Uh, wait. Actually, there's one thing that still needs taken care of. Paimon's starving. Hey, Traveler, you wanna get dinner? Your treat! I'll go with Sucrose to return the leftover materials to the vendors. You two, go get a proper meal. We can't have anyone going hungry. Yeah, now would be a good time for a break. Once everything is ready, let's meet up here again and collate all the information we've gathered. Sounds like a plan! Hi, Mom will have this one, and this one, ooh, and this one. Hey, Paimon's really hungry. And don't forget, Paimon's also ordering for you, too. It's not like Paimon's gonna eat everything by herself. Paimon is super full. Is everything packed up and ready? What do you think about meeting up at 5 to go to my house? Yes, everything's ready. I've packed some great wine and smoked ham. Oh, your parents will love it. <clears throat> ham? Look, we've known each other for quite some time now. Don't you think it's been long enough for you to remember that we only eat bacon in my house? Hmm, I must remember to get some milk today on my way home. Please, feel free to pay a visit to Cat's Tail anytime. Enjoying the scenery? Oh, Tone Deaf Bard! Are you here for some food as well? Oh, I can put something on your tab? Well, that's a pity. I already had a few drinks before coming here. I shall take you up on your kind offer another day. There should be no shortage of opportunities in the future. Anywho, you should be getting ready to thank me. I come bearing good news. Hmm? Huh? What kind of good news? Behold! What is it? It's what you need the most right now. <laughs> the answer to the prophetic puzzle. Simply head to the location marked on the map and you'll find the lantern you've been looking for. However, if I were you, I wouldn't just go and reveal the secret right away. As you've seen, a lot of people have been laboring hard to uncover the answer. A secret is like a well-aged brew. The aroma from the bottle is sweetest when revealed in the company of friends. Then it's settled. I'll leave you to your business for now. Feel free to find me for a chat again once you're done working through the prophecy. <laughs> also, if you have some time, we could organize another fast track love poem class. Oh, you're starting that up again? I sure am. Nobody else has signed up this year, though, so the duty to learn falls on you. <laughs> anyway, see you later. Venti always looks so relaxed whenever we run into him. Uh, Paimon can't help but be jealous. Excuse me, if you don't mind, could I chat with you for a moment? Oh, who are you? You may call me Scarlet. Just like you, I'm a traveler visiting Mondstadt from another land. Mind if I buy you a drink? Leaving the door open for another time, I see. I can tell that you've dealt with a lot of people during your travels. You can tell? 
Well, we are very experienced adventurers after all. I can. That's why I tried to strike up a conversation with you in the first place. I was on my way to go shopping earlier when I overheard your conversation next to the crafting bench. From what I could gather, you are trying to investigate a bizarre prophecy? Yep, bizarre is definitely the word. Ugh, don't you think it sounds just like the kind of story that would happen in Mondstadt? Anyway, that's why I wanted to ask you a favor. If and when you manage to unravel the answer to the prophecy, could you let me know what it is? Not so much the prophecy itself, but Mondstadt as a nation. That's what I'm interested in. I was born in a distant land, but I have family and friends who once lived in Mondstadt for a long time. They said that it's a great place full of fairy tales and romance and recommended that I come for a visit. As it happens, someone I know has an anniversary coming up soon. So I figured this would be a good time to come here and see all the sights that she once saw. What do you think about Mondstadt so far? It certainly lives up to its name as the city of romance and freedom. <laughs> we think so too. So? About the prophecy. Thank you. You're very friendly. It's been a real pleasure to meet you. I'll leave it to you then. I hope you continue to enjoy the city and have a wonderful day. She definitely isn't dressed like a local, huh? Where do you think her hometown could be? Please find me a flower that is not of this world and a guide who will never get lost. Find me one who would never lie, as well as a legend that never ends. Huh? Huh? <sighs> I never thought I'd have someone secretly following me, even in a free city like Mondstadt. <sighs> Good day to you, miss. Why, if it isn't my underclassman, Sino. What a pleasant surprise it is to see you in Mondstadt during the Windbloom Festival. Greetings, Lisa. Though I'm sure you've been aware of my presence in Mondstadt for some time already. Oh dear, looks like you've seen right through me. But I was in no hurry. I knew we'd see each other sooner or later. Yes. It's just as Professor Cyrus said. Shared aspirations always have a way of bringing people into each other's orbit. <laughs> he always has such a poetic way of wording things. I suppose that's the one respect in which I've taken after him. While in your case... Yes, it's his wit and eccentricities that have left their mark on you. Hmm. I'm not sure that describes me very aptly these days. Given that I'm now the General Mahamatra. Still, if we're going to talk about ways with words, I think my deadpan humor is far superior than our professor's. Is that so? Strange. I heard that you're just Sino the Adventurer when you're in Mondstadt. <laughs> you make a good point. What do you think of Mondstadt during this time of year? It's quite nice, isn't it? Yes, it's very nice. I think I'm starting to understand your reasons for leaving the Academia. <laughs> I've always prided myself on making wise decisions, and that was certainly one of them. If our professor had been as sensible as you, he would have had a much easier time in his working life. Being stubborn doesn't help anybody. Well, if even you feel comfortable criticizing him now that he's retired, it really goes to show how much he's changed. Stubbornness is an all-too-common vice among scholars. I hope that never rubs off on you. I'm always happy to see you visit Mondstadt and experience the feeling of freedom for yourself. I heard the latest news about Kale, too. No doubt the traumas of her childhood will persist for a while to come. But I have to say, she appears to be doing quite better this time than on previous visits. I suppose you're something of a mentor to her, aren't you? Now that I think about it, 
the two of you aren't so dissimilar. The power of Hermanubis once brought you great suffering. That's all in the past now. Besides, Professor thankfully didn't treat me like a test subject for the priest's power like the higher-ups had hoped, even though I was a desert dweller. Instead, he gave me the tools I needed to lead the life I have today. He adopted me, educated me, taught me how to fit into society. I am very grateful to him. You are very gifted, and sometimes that can become its own curse. But he has reason to be grateful to you too. Without you as his son slash student, he may have never changed his stubborn ways. As a fellow student of his, I couldn't be happier for the two of you. Well, look at how quickly this developed from small talk to a deep and serious conversation. That's one thing I do miss about my academia days. By virtue of being another of his students, you are as much a part of Professor's family as I. It's perfectly natural for a daughter to inherit her father's conversation style. If you say so. I suppose that means I get to call you baby brother from now on. Um, uh, I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> yes, there's the baby brother I remember. Paimon, great timing. We got a lot of letters in the mailbox, and I just finished sorting them into four groups. Nice work! Well, the real work hasn't even started yet. Hmm. Which batch of letters should we read through first?
me quickly summarize what we found out about a flower that is not of this world. Tainari believes that on closer examination it might be logically paradoxal, while Albedo says that his answer would be better discussed at length in person. As for my answer, I think a clock in the shape of a flower would constitute one that is not of this world. Here's what we've gathered regarding a guide who will never get lost. Mona said that she'd like to join us in uncovering the secret behind the prophecy. While Bennett suggests Fischl, Mona, or the Traveler as potential candidates. Mika didn't submit much, but he did draw a vegetation map for Master Tainari and wrote up a dragon spotting calendar for Sino. Amber also wrote in. She said that she sees herself as nobody's guide, but everybody's friend. As for one who would never lie, Rosaria removed herself from consideration, but both Razor and Sino are willing to support us in our search. Timaeus seems to have forgotten to write to us. And finally, this is what we've gathered on a legend that never ends. Kalee said that her mom has a number of friends who like to write storybooks. Misa believes that legends live forever in people's hearts. I think that for a legend to be never-ending, it has to be filled with hopes and dreams, and actively pass from one person to the next. So, what are the answers to the four riddles, then? Uh, you're really smart, Paimon. I bet you can figure it all out in no time. Or, let's all share our thoughts on what we think the answers might be. Wait! Wait for me! Oh, Timaeus! What brings you here? I'm sorry, I really am. The time just got away from me and I didn't get around to writing that letter. However, I'm happy to announce that I think I can be the one who would never lie. Huh? This is kind of sudden. Not that we don't trust you, Timaeus, but, um, could you elaborate a little after you catch your breath? Uh, of course, of course. <sighs> Do you still remember the time I, uh, um, collaborated with a certain Miss Ying R? Well, basically, she helped me out a lot with my research into potion making once, and, well, we've stayed in touch through letters ever since. Wait, so Ying R is the girl from Leela that Sucrose mentioned earlier? We always assumed you were hard at work every time we saw you at the crafting bench. So you've just been writing letters to Ying R the whole time? Uh, no, I mean, not all the time. I've done some work too. A and anyway, our correspondence covers a lot of serious topics, like perfumes, potions, alchemy. Anyway, a few months ago, I made a vow to the heavens that I will be true to myself and never utter an insincere word until the day that I've managed to win Miss Ying R's heart. So, at Star Snatch Cliff, you were picking Cecilia's as a gift for Ying R? Well, that's right. The Cecilia flower is said to represent a once wayward heart transformed by the power of love. I couldn't think of a better flower to give than that. I know full well that Miss Ying R is far more knowledgeable than I in both the ways of the world and the ways of our craft, but I thought I should make the effort for once and put myself out there. Um, which brings me to the subject of the last few days and the Windbloom Festival. I thought it was time for me to invite Miss Ying R to Mondstadt. But yesterday, Albedo told me that Sucrose has been working hard to help another girl achieve her dream. Huh? And when I went to take a look at our roster, I saw that she'd done my remaining work for me. I feel incredibly guilty. I've been spending all of my time in my own fantasy world while everyone else has been bending over backwards to help other people. How could I ever hope to be worthy of Miss Ying R's love if I'm so selfish? Oh, Timaeus. And that's why I've decided to join you. But then what about Ying R? Yeah. 
Haven't you been planning this for over a month now? You said you were going to invite her to Mondstadt. Uh, well, yes. I, I did mention in my letters that I'd like her to visit, which is why I just sent her another gift with my hand-picked wind blooms, along with a handwritten letter. I explained that a matter of great importance has presented itself, to which I must devote my full attention for the time being. As soon as it's resolved, I'll make haste to Liyue to pick her up in person. I made sure to package the gift and letter with the greatest care. All I can do now is hope that she'll understand. Point being, please know that I sincerely want to support you in this endeavor. Plus, I think I'm an honest person. As far as I recall, I don't think I've told a single lie in my life. Well, you certainly convinced Paimon with that speech. Don't worry, Timaeus. We won't let your determination go to waste. Thank you, Timaeus. Ah, oh, thank you, everyone. I promise to do everything I can to help. Okay, so it looks like we found our one who would never lie. Great! Let's keep it up! On to the other three! Okay, Paimon will do the honors. Ahem. We have with us here the flower, the guide, the legend, and Timaeus. Huh? Why did you only say Timaeus's name? You should say my name, too. All right, all right. We also have Klee. That's me! <laughs> with Klee here, this all somehow feels like we're getting ready for a field trip. There's nothing wrong with the more relaxed atmosphere, is there? Of course. We will soon see if my hypothesis has any merit. Actually, I'm still feeling a little nervous. Me too. But weren't you all fired up just a moment ago? Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Actually, I'm a little worried too. <sighs> Deep breaths. Deep breaths. I know what you're feeling. Saying anything becomes so much harder when there are so many people watching. Well, does anyone know the exact location of where we're headed, or should I do a reading on my scry glass? Hmm. According to the prophecy, once we've figured out the answer, we should test it at the Lantern of Utmost Joy. Wait, but where is this lantern? Oh, we know something about that. What? Wow, that's amazing. You really know how to do everything under the sun. Then we'll let you lead the way. This is it! We're off to find the sacred location of the Lantern of Utmost Joy! here. Hmm. Now that I think about it, the prophecy didn't say anything about what the Lantern Upmost Joy actually looks like, right? Maybe we've overlooked something? Traveler, are you trying to figure out something else from the paper? Hyman's reading too! Uh, huh? It says to look up. But... Uh, but there's nothing above us! Uh, the wind didn't trick us, did it? Place the squirrel on the back of the pointy-eared cat, and a pious puppy will open the doors to show you the way. Huh. Pino read the whole thing out loud, but nothing's happening. Look! Look! The wind is blowing! What a strong wind current. Uh, let's ride it up and see where it leads us. Huh? W we'll have to fly up there? Uh, can someone carry me with them? Here.
jotting down our entire route here. This way, no one will get lost. Oh, good thinking, Kale! Ah, who would have thought we'd find this kind of table here? Weird. It's almost as if someone was holding a tea party. I never would have guessed that such a place could exist. Right above Mondstadt, too. Pretty lantern on the table. There's even a chair for each side of the lantern, too. There seems to be something on the back of this chair. Let me have a closer look. Take your seat, present your answers, and you shall reach enlightenment. Well, as far as instructions go, I guess that's simple enough. So we just need to do as it says, right? Wait a second. Huh? What is it, Albedo? We'd better make sure this place is safe before taking our seats. Everyone, please stay clear for a moment. Well, all our questions and doubts aside, the scenery here is pretty amazing. It'd be impossible to feel stressed here. How is everything, Albedo? Hmm... Everything seems to be fine. I didn't find any traps or suspicious mechanisms. But I also couldn't find any overt destructive devices. Huh? What do you mean? Well, it seems that wrong answers won't have any catastrophic consequences. Looks like we'll have to sit on these chairs and fulfill the prophecy. Everyone, I would like to suggest that we try some risky answers on our first attempt. Let's reserve our most confident answers for the second round. That sounds kind of smart, but why? Ah, uh, I get what he means. If we do as he says, then we may be able to figure out how the puzzle works. I see! That makes a lot of sense. <sighs> Muna, is there something wrong? You're not looking too good. Oh, are you hungry? I brought some snacks. Thank you for offering, Klee, but that's not quite it. While Albedo was checking just now, I gave my scryglass a spin hoping to find some information. But there's a strange aura to this place. It's almost as if someone has been staring at me as soon as we stepped foot in here. But if nothing here has actually been physically tampered with, then... No. Could that person be... What do you mean, Mona? Who could it be? Uh, never mind. It's not like I've got any proof. Ugh, don't leave us on the edge like this, Mona. Hmm. I'll just do what Albedo said. Yes. Now let's test the hypothesis together, Klee. Mm-hmm. Come on, join us, Mona. Oh, all right. Okay. Then I'll answer the first question. If someone were to ask me to find a flower that is not of this world... You can do it, Sucrose! Um... Then I would fetch a tetratanic sweet flower. Alright, I'm up next. My part of the prophecy is to find a guide who will never get lost. Kali... I hope you found your answer. <sighs> My answer is... that I will be that guide. 
For a long time, I have been guided by others. It's taken me a while, but I finally made it to where I am today. Although I still haven't made a name for myself, and I'm still quite immature, I... I would still like to put my name forward. Because I would like to become a guide that can help others. I want to help others the same way Amber, Master Tainari, Sino, and everyone else helped me. Now it's my turn to pass on the gift that I've been given. Alright. It's up to me to answer the third part. I, I, I'll submit myself as one who would never lie. Although I've never really had any other virtues or talents, I'm confident that I've always been an honest person. I, I'd like to thank everyone, too, for giving me this opportunity to validate myself. And last but not least, I will answer the final part of the prophecy. There's no tale more befitting the title of A Legend That Never Ends than Our Fates as Human Beings. Wait! The lantern just lit up! Whoa! All four sides of the lantern are glowing! Huh? But... Kale, could I ask you to stand up for a second? Oh, uh, all right. Hmm. Huh? What's going on? Why is it lighting up regardless of who's sitting in the chair? Didn't it say we have to answer all the questions correctly? It's pretty clear now, isn't it? We've just proven that there is no right answer for this prophecy. No right answer? But how could that be? Although the instructions had come from an old and enigmatic prophecy, it is in fact nothing like the ancient mechanism that we had all imagined it to be. I believe the lantern only serves as a simple signal. Ah, and to think... I never expected you to actually find this place. What? There's someone else here? We meet again, Traveler. Hey! You and that Outlander we met the other day at Good Hunter! It's all thanks to you that I was able to find this place. Good thing that you were too preoccupied with the prophecy to notice someone tailing you from the shadows. Oh, is that so? Then, why do I spy yet another person following in your shadow? Wait, really? <sighs> There's no need for pleasantries. You should know I'm here for you. Is it just because I'm a visitor from abroad? I was there when you snuck your way into Marjorie's place. Huh. So you had your eyes on me even then, huh? That was two whole weeks ago, you know. It's hard not to notice you when I'm on duty every day. All right. In that case, I'll admit it. I was the person who slipped this prophecy into the storybook. Huh? But why? Then, does that mean this wasn't a real prophecy after all? Don't worry. Even though you probably have plenty of reservations about me, you can be sure that the prophecy is genuine. In fact, many of you here today may have heard the code name of the one who left the prophecy to me. She hailed from an ancient assembly of powerful women, each of whom used a single letter to signify themselves. Who would have guessed? It seems that power was indeed left behind by the old hag after all. Ah, so you're B student. It's an honor to meet you. I am Scarlet, the successor of Jay. Well, what are you talking about? It's a long story, but I'm not quite sure that I'm the best person to tell it. Since you've all spent so much time and energy trying to decipher this prophecy, you must also be very interested in the secret behind this lantern, no? The lantern has already been lit. Now then, please allow me to disturb your happy peace. Huh. 
Why did this little thing just light up? How strange. Hello? On the other side of the lantern. Can you hear me over there? Mom? Hmm? Oh, I hear many youthful voices. Madam, I am Scarlet, the successor of Jay. Oh, ahem. <clears throat> Since we've last gathered, Jay's successor has already become so reckless and bold. Unbelievable. Wait, wait, wait. Why are you talking just like the old hag? <sighs> old hag? Who would dare say that? Is that Mona? Who are you? Who dares imitate my master? <clears throat> hmm. And what of imitation and mimicry? It has always been a fool's errand to mimic and learn from humanity. Aunt Alice, I'm here too. Mom, why are you trying to talk like other people? Uh, <laughs> so I see everyone's here. Well then, my warmest greetings, everyone. Miss Alice, why would you... Well, it's been many years since this lantern last lit up. You can't blame me for thinking that one of the old friends from my youth may have decided to catch up again. Huh? Why she sounds so coy all of a sudden? And if I recall correctly, we left this lantern in the care of the Animo Archon Barbados. Hmm. You must be commended for uncovering an artifact entrusted to the God of Wind himself. Tell me. Are you sitting around my beloved tea party table? It's a really long table. Oh, so you are. I suppose this means even the Animal Archon has granted you entry to this place. Was all of this Scarlet's doing? Wait, wait. Paimon's completely lost now. So what was this assembly you were talking about earlier? Oh, Miss Alice... Would it be all right to leave the explanation of that to you? <laughs> well, you should be rewarded for making it all the way up here and activating the lantern. Now then, let me tell you a long and ancient story. Ever heard of the Hexen Circle? As the spooky name suggests, it's a secret society. Once upon a time, it even challenged the animal Archon himself. But he replied, let us make music, not war, and resolve our conflicts through song. From then on, the mages would only ever convene in the woods, in the skies, or on the edges of cliffs. At these tea parties, they discussed their stories and secrets and resolved their differences, as the tea and cakes bore witness to their pledge never to fight amongst themselves. Yesterday, I snuffed out the life of my beloved, he had grown old and was extremely sick. He loved me dearly, so I took his fate in my hands and ended his pain. I'm raising a son. Of all the children I had, he's the only one left. <laughs> but I suppose that still makes me a mother. My lifespan is nothing compared to yours, so I wish to leave you with my storybook. Actually, maybe you can pass it on to your children one day. Oh, this looks interesting. Let me scry. My dear sisters, we mustn't let prophecies threaten our bonds of friendship. Even the most frightening witch was once a little girl. And growing up can be so tough. Sometimes we all need to vent our troubles to the wind. Even if the nations go to war, or the sky falls down, the mages' tea parties shall forever be held around this table. That's right. We often met here to chat and have tea. But then, what about the part saying that if we light the lantern of utmost joy, we'd receive a supreme blessing? Ah, oh, about that. 
I never expected anyone other than Jay to actually read the full contents of that prophecy. It's a little embarrassing. The truth is, that prophecy was actually just a letter that we sent to Jay as a group the day before her wedding. <laughs> hmm. So it was indeed written by all of you. <laughs> I must thank you for resisting the urge to immediately reveal the truth to everybody, Albedo. Knowing you, you probably figured out everything the moment you laid eyes on the message. No, it took me a little longer than that. A flower that is not of this world, a guide who will never get lost, one who would never lie, and a legend that never ends. These four descriptions signify four individual mages. When a member of the organization had to leave the group to spend the rest of her days with her beloved, the other mages would write down this prophecy and send it to her to invite her for a final get-together. A flower that is not of this world signifies, of course, flowers that do not naturally exist in this world. This is the signature of R, full name Rhindaughter, also known as Gold. If there's anyone in this world who could create a flower species that does not yet exist, it would be her. The guide who will never get lost is N, otherwise known as Nicole. You may not have encountered her yet, but she is a truly extraordinary woman who has made this world's direction and order her subject of study. Some of you may be fortunate enough to have already heard her voice. Like a prophetess, she will only speak to guide people toward the truth when a change has occurred in the world. She has a tendency to suddenly speak in someone's mind without any warning. <laughs> if one day you would be unfortunate enough to run into a truly dangerous situation, she may use her voice to guide the way forward for you. <sighs> Who would have guessed that there are so many mysterious women in this world, and that they would all know each other? The one who would never lie is... me. I hope no one would take offense. It's just that I, Alice, or A for short, have always had a soft spot for those with sincerity and candor. As for a legend that never ends, you may not know M in person, but you've likely encountered one of her works. Have any of you ever read The Boar Princess? Huh? I'm pretty sure every child in Mondstadt has read that book. <laughs> it's also one of my favorite stories. M was an exceptional human writer who used her prose to teach me the meaning of grief. Don't you think such a person would deserve a seat at the mage's table? Paimon's getting more and more lost. It may sound hard to believe, but I can attest to everything that Alice has said. Jay was also a mortal who aged and passed on, leaving her title to her students and followers. Alice, you've never acknowledged any of Jay's successors. It's now been centuries since the first of us took on her mantle. I've always wanted to meet you. Do you also want to become a mage? Title aside, I think I'm more interested in the meaning and purpose of the Hexen Circle. I used to think that the Hexen Circle was a group of women who could control the very fate of this world. But now, I've seen for myself that besides Jay, many other ordinary people were also among you. Do you think less of us now? No, not at all. My interest has been piqued, and I'm now even more drawn towards the idea of becoming a mage. You're right. I've never acknowledged any of Jay's successors. But you are different. You are much more fascinating than any of your predecessors. Oh, has someone finally piqued Aunt Alice's interest? Now is not a good time, Scarlet, but as soon as I am able, I will seek you out for a meeting. I want you to tell me all about Jay's married life back in her hometown. So the mage who received the prophecy letter from all of you was Jay? She left the Hexen Circle after getting married? Precisely. 
There was only one way the letter could have been interpreted. She would have known what we meant as soon as she saw the message. We were just asking one thing of her. Please come to see us again. Before you go and settle forever with your happiness, please come share some of it with your best friends and sisters. So, the Supreme Blessing actually meant... All journeys are fleeting and will eventually come to an end. What will give us the most fulfillment and happiness in the end are those who will greet us at our journey's destination. Dear child, I believe you can also understand what I am talking about. We women will always have many troubles and encounter pains and frustrations that will keep us up at night. But no matter how hard things may become, we will cross mountains and oceans to see our best friends again, regardless of how many years have passed or how far the distance may be. As long as we can be with our beloved friends, our hearts will be filled with joy. To us mages, that's what being supremely blessed is all about. Oh. I still don't get it, but I do know that all the mages are Mom's best friends. <laughs> if you ask how I see it, the Hexen Circle is just a group of ladies that I spent my youth with. Anyway, I'll introduce some of the other members to you all later. I still have a few things to attend to, so this will have to do for today. Bye, Mom! Todoko says bye, too! Goodbye, darling, and farewell to all of our other friends as well. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Oh, now that I think of it, isn't it getting close to that time of year? Yes, it's Windbloom again, Alice. It's also a special anniversary, Dade. I'm sure you still remember. Yes, I do remember now. It was on this day, many, many years ago, that Jay tied the knot. Oh, just in time for the Festival of Love and Freedom. Everyone, please enjoy this year's Windbloom Festival to the fullest. Albedo, why didn't you tell me we'd have to glide all the way back down? Uh, oh. Are you okay, Timaeus? Maybe you'd feel better if you just, you know, let it out. I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just, oh, a little glider sick, that's all. You may want to look into getting your own gliding license when you have the time. It might prove helpful to you. Uh, okay. Sure thing. It sounds like you've still got something on your mind. Why don't you tell us? We're all happy to listen. <sighs> it's nothing, really. It's just... Well, Alice's story was really interesting and romantic. I won't argue about that. But still, the whole thing wasn't quite what I was hoping for. Of course, I didn't actually expect this supreme blessing to be real, but... <sighs> <sighs> Don't say that! None of this was your fault, Timaeus. Honestly, it's more on me for having agreed to be the Wimbledon Festival Special Ambassador. Had I not asked for everyone's help... If anything, it should be my fault for finding that prophecy. Oh, no, no, no! I didn't mean to blame the two of you either! I just feel like... This whole adventure didn't really end on a high note, and... We also didn't really get anything out of it. Hmm... But I'd say we still learned something new. Well, that aside, Timaeus, you still need to go to Liyue to apologize to Yingar, right? Do you want Kalei and I to accompany you? Oh, Miss Yingar, 
well, uh, I mean, I just really don't want her to get mad at me. Now that I've come back to my senses, oh, I really don't know what I should do. Hey, you three, you may want to look over there. Huh? M Miss Ying R? Oh, so that's Miss Ying R? I've never met her before. Yep, that's her. And she actually came all the way to Mondstadt. I, I am so sorry, Miss Ying R. But, but how did you. I mean. <laughs> Are you so happy just to see me? I, uh, of course I am. I'm so happy that uh, I don't, uh, sorry, I, I don't know what to say. I was ready to give you a harsh scolding, but now that I've seen you like this, I suppose I could let you off the hook this time. You said you couldn't come to pick me up because of a very important matter, right? Well then, of course I had to come and find you instead. <laughs> Should we go see how they're doing? Why well, wouldn't? You'll get hit by a forest boar if you interrupt a couple's romantic conversation. Oh, really? Uh, we'll just leave them alone then. I am so glad to see Timaeus find his happiness. I have to say, I'm even more envious of you, Sucrose. You can be happy just to see others happy. And you gave me so much help without any expectations in return. Even though you said that we're very much alike, I still feel like you have a much bigger heart than I do. But if you say that, then I'd say I'm also nowhere near as brave or tenacious as you. I guess we have the same amount of positive qualities. They're just... spread over different parts of our personalities. I've never visited Sumeru, or made many friends from outside of Mondstadt. I'm happy just to have met and become your friend. Maybe I'll get shy and flustered when I meet other people I don't know in the future. But... That's okay, too. Since we are so alike, you probably get what I'm trying to say. You just need to believe that all of your issues aren't really issues at all. But... Isn't it too late now for me to learn to accept myself? Uh, well... Hmm... Do you know anything about the blooming cycles of Cecilius? Um, I may have read about that in a book before. That's a topic that my parents used to talk about back when they were still dating. Surprising, right? To think that people would talk about that while on a date. My mom brought it up at dinner one time last month. She called my dad the most boring man she knew, and said that he even turned up late to a date once, all with a smile on her face. But she also said that learning is just another part of life. It's never too late to start something, as long as you recognize that it's something good for you to do. Hmm. Why don't you give it a try, Kale? Okay, I'll try my best. They are really having a great conversation. Paimon can't even find a moment to join in. <gasps> I nearly forgot. This is for you. This texture... Are these seeds? <sighs> yep. I believe I mentioned my sweet flower research to you before. These are the seeds of the sweet flower cultivars that I've worked on. It's nothing too special, but they're the best cultivars that I've made. So... I really hope that you'll like them. They're super sweet, and easy to grow and keep. I'm also submitting them as my wind blooms for this year. 
I wish that the animal Archon could also see how lovely they are. Thank you. I'll plant them in the Avidia forest and take good care of them. Kale, please take these notes with you. I've heard that you've been working hard on your studies, so I've prepared some study materials for you at Sucrose's request. Feel free to look through them whenever you can find the time. Mondstadt's doors will always remain open to you. Uh, thank you so much. Really, I... I don't know what to say. I... I'm just really happy. Ah! Sucrose! Now's your chance! Didn't you want to collect a breath of joy? <sighs> You're right. I almost forgot. Kali, can you exhale once into this test tube? I will save this breath of joy and use it in my research. Oh, really? May I? Of course. What? What was that? It was like a little cloud of happiness, but now it flew away. Well, luckily, there's still some breath left in the test tube. I'll seal it up for now. I'll keep working on it and let you know as soon as I have any breakthroughs in my research. Yeah, you can write to me. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I receive your letter. Oh, it looks like you found a new pen pal. Master Tenari! Saito! If your friendship was forged in a test tube, does that make you test friends forever? That's it. I think you've ruined Sumeru's reputation in Mondstadt beyond all hope of repair. All that matters is that I've enjoyed Mondstadt immensely. The dragon here possesses a majestic form. Oh, that reminds me. Traveler, this card back is for you. Sino wanted you to have one for yourself. If I had to guess, I'd say he probably wants you to use it if you challenge him to a duel. I'm a master of the game. Do you dare challenge me? Believe this guy? Huh. Let's knock him off his high horse. W wait, I've got something to give you too. Huh? Kali has a gift for us? Yeah, I figured I should follow local Monsat customs and prepared a few small things themed after the Windbloom Festival. I made these bookmarks from Samaru roses at the hotel. I want to give them to Amber, Master Tainari, and Sino. During Windbloom, Monsetters offer flowers to the people most important to them. You three are family to me. But Tainari said that we're not anything like an academic family. He wouldn't write joint papers with us. Well, in this case, we can consider ourselves as regular siblings. And that should be just fine. <laughs> I agree. Oh, and here are some Padisara seeds as well. These are for the Traveler, Paimon, and everyone else from Mondstadt. Whoa, are these really for us? So, are these your chosen Wimblums? Mm-hmm, one of them. Both Padisara's and Sumeru Roses are my Windblooms. Although they're not native to Mondstadt, they are the flowers that can best express my feelings. I want to give them to the people I feel thankful for. To those who... I wish to accompany as we greet more seasons and future wind blooms together. The real blessing in life is when you are surrounded by people who you'd miss day and night, and who you'd want to see even if that meant crossing mountains and oceans to do so. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear you say that. <gasps> Sucrose, do you see that cloud over there? Huh? Doesn't it look... just like your test tube? Am... am I? 
Am I dreaming? Uh, Miss Ying Art, you really came all the way to Mondstadt to see me? Why were you willing to make the trip? I still can't believe it. <laughs> Why wouldn't I want to come see you, hmm? It's not like a quick trip from Liyue to Mondstadt is completely unheard of or anything. Also, isn't it time for you to drop the miss and just call me Yingar? Oh, Yingar. Mm hmm. Ying R. <laughs> I, I, I think I still need some time to get used to calling you that. <laughs> Look at you, already so flustered. And we're just getting started. Uh, no, no, I, uh, I. Uh, I'm just overwhelmed with happiness. Thank you so so much for coming to see me for Windbloom. You like the card back from Sino, right? I must admit, I also spent a good amount of effort coming up with a design. His request was quite... Uh, interesting. He wanted a dragon, a cool pose, and a design that would stand out and awe his opponents. Although the commission was for himself, he wanted the back to be flashy enough to draw the attention of the opposing player. Perhaps there's something that can be said about how, when it comes to genius invocation TCG, friendship is more important than competition. He also said that such an impressive card back should be shared with friends. Since he gave it to you, this must mean he considers you to be a close friend. Oh, and speaking of, to repay my efforts, he also gifted me the card back as well. Hmm. Maybe I'll also give the game a try. Well, what do you think? I trust you've enjoyed this year's Windbloom Festival. I'm happy to see you find the time amidst your busy adventures to return to Mondstadt and celebrate the winds of freedom with us. And if you have a moment now, would you care to hear a new love poem I wrote this year? <clears throat> Allow me to recite it for you. This world has never seen such vibrant color. It bestows upon everyone a brilliant hue. A shade more ethereal than white, yet more radiant still than gold. It eases into your eyes and restores to light a solitary soul. Hmm, maybe a bit too somber. <laughs> uh, maybe I should write another one on sweet flowers instead. I quite like my new card back. It goes perfectly with my deck. I take it you've also received your card back? Want to use it to play around? No problem. Just come find me again when you're ready. Kalei! Sucrose! I brought some home-cooked food. Why don't we enjoy it together? Really? Sounds great! I, I... must point out a small issue about your cooking. You have a tendency to... put a little too much flavoring in your dishes. <laughs> uh, sorry! I guess I've been a little heavy-handed with the seasonings lately. Are you feeling stressed recently? Do you want to find someone to play cards with? It really helps with stress. I promise. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. If I recall, both you and Sucrose are pretty good players, right? Oh, yeah, we are. We've been playing together, and we were actually talking about this just a few days ago. 
Since you are already familiar, would you mind also showing me the rules sometime? Yeah, Kali seems to be a natural at the game. Maybe she's already the best player out of all of us. Huh? Me? That's right. You've been all talk at the tavern. That little girl from Sumeru is really good at the game. If I can find the chance, I would love to test my skills against her. Really? Isn't that great, Kali? You've become a TCG celebrity. Oh, I... I... <laughs> Um, could you also say something nice to Klee? Oh, of course. <clears throat> I've actually gotten really good at this. Hmm. Oh, Miss Klee, our mighty Spark Knight, you are the flame of hope for all of Mondstadt and the vessel for... Huh? What's a vessel? Oh, no, uh, Klee doesn't seem to really appreciate this kind of praise. Uh, okay, then. Klee, you're super adorable, and your hat and backpack are the cutest. Uh, did your mom get them for you? Yep! Mom said that she picked them out with Dodoko, and Dodoko really loves this backpack, too. Which is why Dodoko's always hanging from the side. Mom also said that someone else was also helping her pick out the gifts that day. Um, hmm. What was the name again? Ah, if Klee remembers correctly, people would call her the Old Hag. Wait, the Old Hag? Huh. Okay, well, now that you mention it, the Old Hag does have a fondness for picking out hats. Thank you so much for your surveying tips. I had no idea that the Sumeru Forest Watchers would also have expertise in this area. <laughs> you really do know just about everything. It's only natural that Forest Watchers and Surveyors would have some similar skills. We're both constantly outdoors and on the move after all. Anyway, I'm glad I could help. If I can find a chance, Oh, I'd love to pay a visit to Sumeru as well. I've heard that the terrain is quite complicated there, and it'd be a treat to see it for myself. Yes, complicated is indeed one way to put it. Visitors often get lost when they visit Sumeru for the first time, and they have a tendency to pick all kinds of mushrooms and fruits in the rainforest without discretion. Ah... Uh, we get a lot of people here picking Philanima mushrooms as well. Actually, have you ever tried adding them to a recipe? They are quite bland by themselves, but perhaps the taste can be improved if they're cooked together with other ingredients. I've never tried that myself, but now that you mention it, I do want to give it a try. I'm quite curious too. Would you like to pick some together later? <laughs> 